Welcome back, everyone, to Highlighted in All Sports Culture Podcast. It is me. It is Samuel L. Jackson, but no Matt Sullivan for this episode. He's currently in Germany for Oktoberfest. Me and Sam did not catch the invite. Um, Sam, how are you feeling about that? Very disappointed with that. He yeah. has like 15 people there with him, and we didn't, didn't take us. So we are not on the top 15 of Sully's friends list, which <laughs> kind of sucks, but it's all good. Um, Well, my weekend fucking sucked, not even just because of the commanders, but mm. App State blew a 28-3 lead. So it was a miserable weekend for me uh, from a sports standpoint, but traveled far and away to the nation's capital um, that was overturned by Eagles fans. So that was also wow. fun. Um, I'm sure you'll talk about that whole experience when we get to that game. Yeah. How was uh how was your weekend? Anything fun? Um not really. Uh it was good from a sports standpoint. I, your team I, yeah, went. it was kind of miserable, but I mean it was it was a fine weekend. We'll just say that. But uh nothing really eventful. Yeah. So take it's I'm sure yours is even worse yeah like, it was tough like it. but i know you said you won money though and i might win more money tonight for the betting i would sector, love to way. talk about that but i'll get there when i talk about my first point um okay but anyway takeaway tuesday you guys know the drill but solely not being here um he didn't get to watch any uh sunday games so he didn't have any takeaways uh so me and sam are just gonna do four takeaways each um, and then we'll get into our new betting segment at the end. I went 0 and 2. Sam is. You... I am. Yeah, what is your record? Oh, well, week one, I was 0 and 2. This week, I currently am 1 for 1. I am. I've hit two legs of my three leg parlay, and my third leg relies on the Giants Cowboys Monday night game hitting the under. 39 right 39 points i think so so it's i'm low, hoping that happens both offenses suck so it's fine it, exactly um, but yeah um if you don't mind i'll get started on my first takeaway that's all um, good and i want to talk about the colts chiefs game but more so and more not really that game uh but trap games as a whole and vegas as a whole because i seriously like not even joking i think vegas has a say in how football games go. <laughs> it's absurd how I if I don't know, I, I made a TikTok, I outlined everything. You know what? Hold on. The viewers are gonna fucking hear my magic. And you're <laughs> and they're gonna hear exactly how I Kirk got access to the game script. That's what happened. He so, hit up Goodell and got the script for week three. Here we go. Hold on. All right. Everyone, we're gonna here, yeah. Tell me if you can hit as well. Like this bet, I love this bet. Colts plus five and a half at home. Weird line, and I love it. Yeah, everyone and their moms gonna be on Kansas City. Ninety three percent of the money right now is on Kansas City. I'm taking plus five and a half, but honestly, I sprinkle a little bit on the money line on the Colts. Look, Ooh. they're getting their two best receivers back. It's a home game. They're zero and one and one. I don't see this Colts team. Say what they. Yeah, they haven't been good the first two weeks. But do we trust Frank Wright to get a win soon? Probably. I don't know, man. Like, it, it just feels like a Kansas City team 2-0 and that has looked far superior over this Colts team. Five and a half. It just seems like a weird line. Maybe it's just me. And I still think everyone is on Kansas City for this game. I, I think it's a trap game. And I love uh, Indianapolis to cover. And I think they're going to win this game outright. I'll give you two. And then after that, I say Commander's going to cover. Yeah, that, 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 that. <laughs> Um. But, dude, I'm telling you, man, every single week there's a trap game. And early on in the year, teams fall early. Like, like I was reading the game kick picks comments because I'm fucking like that and I want to be right all the time. I want to prove everyone wrong. And I saw all those haters say, what the fuck is Kurt doing? Like, what does he think the Colts are going to win? And I'm like, dude, the Chiefs, didn't we see this exactly last year? where they lost so many games they should not have early on in the year, especially it was more so like October, November. Still, the point stands. We literally said last week on the podcast, Indianapolis started horribly. 
I promise you, Indianapolis will be fine. We said that last week. They're still going to probably win the division. I still think they're going to win. Dude, you do I don't I, know about after this week. You never I, know. I know. I we'll will get give, to that. <laughs> I'm going to give you a lot of money if they don't win the division over Jacksonville. They are winning the division. I am very sure of that. They're going to win a lot of games. They're going to go on a big streak. <laughs> they they probably will fuck it up at the end because Matt Ryan sucks. But I, I think they're going to be a really good team in like December, November, January, that standpoint. Anyway, though, that trap game, you could see it from a mile away. Minus two and a half, it opened at. Then the line all the way went back to six and a half. 93% still of the betters, still on Kansas City. I was like, no. Colts are keeping this close. I said I'd sprinkle the money line. I thought they were going to win. But even so, it was always going to be Colts to cover. Um, And I'm not saying, like, I'm a genius because I think anyone can look at how trends work, what percent of the money's on teams. Like, there's there's not always is Vegas going to be correct because there are many times where um, – a large percent of the money is on a team to cover. And it actually does like 87% of the money was on Philadelphia to cover six and a half. They, it did. Um, but it, it, you gotta, it's all kind of just gut feeling at the end of the day. And I was like, Colts, it just screams like an opportunity for, for them to have a trap game. And guess what? If I would have said this on a huge sports talk show, F, let's say it's um, first take. I go on first take Sunday morning, and I'm like, the Colts are going to cover this game. They're probably going to win it. Everyone's going to be like, oh, he's a fucking dumbass. But after the game, no one is saying anything because it's the reality of the NFL. Unpredictability happens every single fucking week, and no one talks about it. I mean, yeah. I mean, you're absolutely correct. And, hey. You've been killing it with game picks this year. Dude, I like have, you're I you're have. in the lead. Yep. You're, I, I, you're, you're taking my place. I've I'm been saying, shitting the bed I, this year. <laughs> I learned from you, man. Um, but it's it's not even I'm not even like trying to say this as a way of like, oh, I called and everyone else did. It's like like for example, the Bengals are minus four against Miami on Thursday. There's no reason they should be favored in that game. Absolutely yeah, I don't, no I don't reason. Know about that. <laughs> what, does, what does Vegas know? Is it a don't... home game? It yeah, is. Yeah, it should be a home game. But still, what what am I missing about it? It opened at minus one, and now it is minus four. Like every uh, single and I guess don't know what? About that. 70% of the money right now is on Miami. Like I is it as it should be. Miami's 3 and 0. They just beat the best team in football. Just cuz Tua might not play because of the whole weird situation going on with him, I guess, but that line is weird. It's mm-hmm. a weird line. So, I'm not going to touch it, but if I had a bet, I'd go with Cincinnati. Like I cuz it's it's again, it's like I I feel like I'm missing something here. Um and that's when Vegas knows something that we don't. But anyway, all in all, Vegas script writes the NFL. I'm sure of it. Oh, Vegas has been on one this year. They have yeah. been their odds and their like their spread been pretty good this year. It has. Uh, yeah. And it's like it's always narrow. Uh but I yeah, you're right. Trap games are real. And I found this out uh yesterday morning that Andy Reid is historically terrible against the Colts. Uh so maybe it's just a case of history repeating itself. But I think you're just. Oh, yeah. Right Andrew Luck when he came back against the Chiefs with uh, with Alex Smith. Exactly. That one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's my first take. Um, and I, I feel like now on when I'm betting, you just got to like, you got to go against the public. That's like the number one rule. If I was telling someone that was starting betting, I'd say fate the public. That's like your number one tip. That's honestly not a bad tip. So just fade the public. Keep building it up, or just fade Trent. That that also could work. Yeah, or fade Sully. That that okay. also works as yeah. well. That works. Uh, next take. I'm not fading this team. Uh, this team. I brought them up a little bit earlier uh, when you were talking about. Oh, the Colts will be fine. I'm so sure they're gonna win this division. I don't know, man. Jacksonville. They're looking legit, and I think the first two weeks were like. 
Oh, they look pretty good. They're very much improved. It's hard not to be improved from what they were last year with Urban Meyer. Uh, they won a, They narrowly lost to the Commanders. They dominated the Colts, but are we sure the Colts are really that good? After this week, everyone should just be like, yeah, the Jaguars, they're just straight up good. And we can straight up admit that. We can accept that. And I'm full blown in on Caxonville. Curtis, to represent my devotion to Caxonville. I got to like stand up for this. I'm, I'm rocking the dad cargo khakis because Trevor Lawrence is daddy. That That's why I'm rocking the dad cargos. I should have... I should have worn the pants, but I think the shorts do its justice. So. I, I thought about doing the, the pants as well, but then I'm like, I got to rock the dad shorts. I got to do it. Yeah. I, I haven't worn these in like since I was 15, and they yeah. still fit me somehow. Uh, they are a tight fit, I will say, but that's for the YouTube viewers. We are both rocking khakis for Caxonville, just like we will the whole season. Uh, whatever they have a big win. Can we just talk about that Trevor Lawrence – is looking like a top 10 quarterback. He's been a top 10 quarterback for this season so far. Uh, he has made massive strides in his development compared to last year. I mean, last year he was bad. He was just straight up bad. We can all accept that he flashed a little bit here and there, but all in all, he was in the worst situation. A young quarterback has been put in ever. In recent years, yeah, I, I mean, it was easily one of the worst, and it's been the worst in recent years. And he finally gets under Doug Peterson, who I have to apologize to because I hated this man. I didn't hate him, but I was pioneering for him to get fired in the 2020 season when Carson Wentz fell off a cliff. He's good. He's figured out how to actually coach this team. This team is really well coached, both on the offensive side and defensive side. Dude, their defense is legit. Exactly. Good ass defense. They've got a bunch of freaks on that defense. I mean, Josh Allen is playing out of his mind. Trayvon Walker has been really good so far this season. Uh their interior line is fun. Their linebacking core is all over the place. Devin Lloyd looks like a stud for a yeah. linebacker coming out of college who we both really liked, but he wasn't like a coverage linebacker prospect. We saw him more as a run stuffer, uh, blitzer kind of linebacker. Nah, this dude looks like he's been in the league multiple years playing linebacker with how he's been covering. I mean, he was running one for one with Gerald Everett on that one play, which was just impressive as hell. And then you got their secondary that's playing really well too. Their defense is filled full of really good players and it's working. They are really well coached. And then you go to the offensive side where, yeah, on paper, it may not look like a bunch of really good players. and But as a unit, they are working really well off of one another. I mean, obviously, I brought up Trevor Lawrence already basically being a top 10 QB after this first few weeks. Then you've got James Robinson, who we all kind of just forgot. Dude, I in my big fantasy league, I have Travis. And I'm like, oh man. Every every single reason in the world for them to move on from James Robinson, and they just haven't, which like it, it worked well, out. They shouldn't have moved on from him in the first place. Let's not get that wrong. No, I I agree, but like it was Urban Meyer that wanted to move off of James Robinson for absolutely no reason. He wanted Kadarius Tony. Uh, he openly admitted that, which is one of the, you never should do that. <laughs> you mean the, uh, the most potential guy in sports as Sully says. Oh yes. Yes. And understandably so, because ETN has been a non-factor, oh, not a non-factor. He's been used, but James Robinson is their main running back. He's what is, their pure runner. I want to see what Kadarius Tony's line is today, but keep talking. Um, <laughs> as I figure this out, I, I'm sure Urban Meyer is salivating he just wanted to get a lot of speed threats in that team uh but they've added christian kirk who i brought this up last week uh he's been worth this money and we're all like oh he's a good number two he's a great slot receiver but i don't know if you're gonna be anything better than that 
this dude, they're running the offense through him. He is moving all over the freaking place, and he's been great at it. Evan Engram, he's found a role here. They finally figured out how to use him horizontally rather than vertically, which is where he would play best because he's a fast tight end. Uh, and then they got a bunch of other receivers who I guess Trevor just has good connections with, even though this team probably still needs like a true alpha like a true X, but they're making do without it because this offense is working. They just hung 38 on the Chargers, who, yes, the Chargers, they are probably the most cursed team in football right now with all the injuries they just had over the last week. Um, They lost Rashawn Slater in this game for the year. Justin Herbert almost got tie-rotted. One of their (laughs) deep threats got hurt. Keenan Allen's hurt right now. JC Jackson hasn't recovered as well as they thought. Joey Bosa is going to be out a couple weeks. The Chargers are just cursed. But I thought they were going to be the best team in the AFC for the regular season. And I had them winning the Super Bowl. And then the Jaguars just waltzed into SoFi Stadium, lit them up, did their business, and left. And you know what? I'm ready to just straight up say it. This team is just really good. And I, I kind of preseason, I was like, I can see this team being good, but I just think they're like a year away. They're here. They're this year's Bengals, and I'm pretty confident in saying that. Nah, they're not. Nah, this year's I, 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 don't, I don't mean Bengals as if they're going to the Super Bowl. I mean, they're like this year's Bengals as in they go from bottom of the barrel team to a contender. A, not a contender, but like a, a playoff caliber team. Okay. I got you. You kind of because last year, I don't think anyone really of us believed that the Bengals were the Super Bowl contender that they were. No, they got hot at the right time. And we talked about this last week after the loss to Dallas. They still have the same problems that they did last year, and their colors are showing right now. And obviously, they just picked up a win over the Jets, but it's the Jets. They're going to get tested against two of this week. Whereas with Jacksonville, they have beaten. The Chargers, we all think, is a really good team. And the Colts, who... Just beat Kansas we, City. Yeah, they just beat Kansas City, albeit it was lucky as shit that Kansas City special teams were horrible. Um, but still, it's Vegas. They won, they won Vegas, the game. Vegas placed a chip into the ball, and they I made guess. sure that Kansas City fucked it up, I'm telling you. Um, no, I, Jacksonville is good. I, I still don't think they're going to be incredible. Um, particularly this year, they have done a lot of great things. And obviously that's the biggest addition for them was Doug Peterson, the whole coaching staff. Like in all honesty, you could have placed anyone in there as opposed to urban Meyer. And it surely had to have been better. Yes. Um, but obviously Doug Peterson has been fantastic. He believes in his players. They believe in him. That's the number one trade a, a head coach needs from his team. So I like Jacksonville. And I remember we were sitting on this podcast however many years ago and we made fun of Sully for saying he's a solid number two, Christian Kirk, and now he's balling out with um, Jacksonville. So, you know, time comes around. I don't think we made fun of Sully for saying Christian Kirk. Oh, I did. Oh, you did? Oh, I did. did. Oh, yeah. He was like, Christian Kirk's a good number two. And I was like, no, he's fucking not. He is not a good number two. Oh, really? Yeah. He was not. No, he was not. Don't even. He was not a good number two. At least at the time. Uh, I don't know. I mean, Arizona runs through one wide receiver primarily. Like Arizona fucking sucks. And we're not talking about the Cardinals this week. Screw them. (laughs) That should have been fucking ever evident since the beginning, but whatever. But they Uh, ran everything through DeAndre Hopkins. So, I mean, Christian Kirk, yeah, he still put up like, okay stats, but like we didn't project him to make 20 mil a year and be a top five paid receiver right when he got his bag before every wide receiver in the league got a big money extension. Um, but he's been very much worth that contract so far uh, based on how they've been using him. I just want to, I'm just thinking in my mind, like, well, I'll, I'll bring up more about Trevor Lawrence with a later take uh, because it kind of relates to something else I want to bring up. But um, I want to see this team with that, with like Kayshawn boot, like, <laughs> drafted there like don't lie to me you throw him in there oh 
I'm buying all the stock in Jacksonville if that's <laughs> the case. Their offensive line is even like pretty good. Like, yeah. like Cam Robinson, he's gotten franchise tagged like two years in a row. Or like, <laughs> yeah, and like everyone's like, oh, he's just a stopgap. He's been good. He's been very good this year. I need Brandon Jackson. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> Brandon Scherf, man. I, you know, what great decision. Juan Taylor, yeah. What great decision Washington made, letting him walk and instead signing interior O-line who doesn't fucking know how to play football. But that goes against my thing. Um, I would love Jacksonville to continue winning. We wear khakis, um, and the vibes are positive on this podcast. That's what I would love. Uh, if Jacksonville wins the AFC South, I will buy a full khaki outfit and wear it on the podcast. I, I will too. I will buy <laughs> a khaki jacket, a khaki shirt, if that even exists. Uh, I'll buy Tim's, put Tim's on. I, I'm I'm going to go full-blown Jacksonville. I, I mean, we all like believed in Trevor Lawrence. Like we're all just like, this is just the worst <laughs> situation ever. But like, dude. He's looking legit. He has made major strides so far. And you could just tell that that situation last year. Oh, come on. That's going to be you. <laughs> the Daryl fit. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's that's going to be us. But, uh, yeah, no, Trevor, Trevor's been great. He's been fantastic for them. I'm being – okay, I'm just going to ask you this right now before we transition to you being sad. That's me twenty four seven. Well, of course. <laughs> what did you, you like think... my did you like my inside you Lewin Davis tweet about Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great movie. <laughs> um continue. What do you project? I know you said you don't think they're gonna be incredible. No, I don't think that either. I think they'll be good though. I think they're gonna be middle of the league team minimum. Um do you think they win this division? Do you think they challenge for the division? I can tell least? you exactly who they're gonna be. They're going okay. to be the 2018 Cleveland Browns. The team that went down to the wire in week 17 against the Ravens won seven or eight games that year. Okay. Baker was playing fantastic. Trevor's playing fantastic. It's a fun team to root for that has been detrimented in the past. I think that's Jacksonville. I think like I think they'll win eight or nine games. I think eight's a good number. This defense is much better than the defense that Cleveland had in twenty. Well, not everything though. is perfectly symmetrical, but I thought that was a good comparison. <laughs> also, they're in a... Is this a worse division than the 2018 AFC North? Because the Bengals no. were... Bengals sucked that year. The Bengals were bad. That was but... the Joe Burrow tank year. Um, Steelers. The Steelers... Steelers... I'm going to look this up. The Ravens were... That was Flacco's year. That was, was that Flacco. The... That was Flacco's last year. Oh wait, no, no, no. Ravens made the playoffs. Ravens made the playoffs, and that was, um, when they played the Chargers in the playoffs, and everyone was wanting, uh, Lamar Flacco to go in for. It. No, I thought it was switch around. Didn't. Yeah, Lamar... it was. It was Lamar came in later in the season. Flacco. Everyone wanted Flacco to come in because Lamar had a bad for really bad first yeah, half. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then he kept playing the game, and then he made the game really close. And then the Chargers but, still won. Yep. Um. So the Steelers were nine six and one. Okay. The Bengals got the first overall pick from going six and ten. No. no. Joe Burrow got drafted in twenty twenty. I'm stupid. Yeah. That's um, when they took um the O line with the Jonah Williams. Yes. 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 So this was still Andy Dalton year. Uh, this division is this AFC North worse than the AFC South right now? No. Yeah, I I'd say no. The Texans are way worse than probably the Bengals were. Um, people were hyping up the Texans after Week One. And I was like, Let's slow <laughs> down. Let's I think everyone down. knew they were going to be bottom two team in the league. Yeah. Um, I mean, it just depends on how you view the Titans. And I still don't know how to view the Titans. They're they're not good. They beat but the Raiders. But I, I don't know how to view the Raiders. I will say again, no, I didn't place it, but uh, the over under for Ryan Tannehill was two oh two. Oh my god! Against I, the Raiders? Yeah, and you know what he had two sixty four. That was so fucking free. He hit that in like the first half. And guess what? I sent it into like AS dude. If no, it's fine. It's fine. If people, you know, the post we had 
where it was like our favorite prop, uh, each prop, our favorite thing. So we did like Packers money line to spread. I yeah. said Colts plus six, Packers money line over Tannehill passing yards. It would have been check, check, check. Green. Everyone's cashing in. <laughs> Bezos left and right. And then we had a little bit of a change up, which is fine. I'm all about supporting the boys at ASC. If they don't agree with me, that's fine. But I didn't become Bezos overnight. That's what I that's what I tell people. All right. My next takeaway. Um, so uh I drove eight hours. I took a bus for three and drove for five to Washington, DC. Okay. To watch the most pathetic fucking performance of my entire life. You know what this reminded me of? Not sure how much you remember this, but us Redskins fans at the time, I'm not racist, remember this very clearly. We played the Philadelphia Eagles at um FedEx Field in 2010, I believe it was. Okay. It I was Michael don't Vick. I remember this. <laughs> I probably do because of this play. It was Michael Vick and Deshaun Jackson on the first play. They go play oh, action. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that was the worst night of my entire life. I remember watching that vividly. You were like that, seven years old with that. Happened. Yeah, no, that was, I was eight. I was eight. I was eight. Um, oh, but oh, dude, I'm I, sorry. <laughs> I That was like the first game I remember being a Redskins fan. Set ever you since, up for your whole life. <laughs> ever since then, man, I cannot do this anymore. I genuinely can't. And I've waited two weeks to rant because the first two weeks were fine. We beat Jacksonville. How did we beat Jacksonville? Week Blows one. my mind. Week one. That's the only explanation. Then we played Detroit. Had a horrible first half, but third quarter, we were very good. Like, And Detroit is a good team. Offensively, they can get things going. Like, It wasn't the end of the world. We're on the road. I am fucking done with this coaching staff. I'm done. Sincerely. Because I remember coming on this pod, I... Subtweeted it today. The moment we let Kevin O'Connell go, it didn't seem like a big deal. I was fucking furious because we let a 34 year old, bright minded offensive guy walk through the door. And we've seen it happen so many times with Matt LaFleur, Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay, now Kevin O'Connell, who's Mike coaching McDaniel. a Vikings team. Yeah, who's coaching a Vikings team that is two and one right now. And obviously, they have a great offense. We know that. We have Scott Turner, who is terrible. <laughs> Scott Turner is horrible. We have Jack Del Rio, who has arguably a very solid defensive unit, but can't rush. I swear, if you were back there at quarterback, you would not feel any sort of pressure. I said going into this game, anyone with a fucking brain could have realized we were not going to get one single sack on that Eagles O-line. It was never going to happen. We, ugh, I, I was so done. And here's my biggest thing about this. And then my rant will kind of be done. Ron Rivera, yes, it was a, probably the right hire at the time because we had Jay Gruden who, after that fucking misery of a season, was shown making out with girls outside of many rooms. It was a weird situation. Dan Snyder, we know what the fuck that fucker is. Um, we needed someone to brighten the culture and Ron Rivera, obviously players coach, everyone loves him. Yeah, whatever. We get it. Um, if I hear another press conference from him that says, we're going to figure this out. We have the personnel to do it. It's going to be fine. I got to I, Ron, here's the sad truth. We don't have the personnel. We don't have the team. It's just the truth. We're not that good. And as much as me, I know Sully does it occasionally with this Giants. We joke about how good this team is. It becomes a tipping point. You just, it's not funny anymore. Like I can go out and say, Commanders can win the Super Bowl. We never will under Dan Snyder. We never will. And it's, I've gone psychotic supporting this team. But three games in, we're playing a division rival. We let what 30,000 35,000 Eagles fans coming to FedEx field, which is more than the app state, uh, home attendance, by the way, to put into perspective, you know, how fucking wild those games are. <laughs> we let those many Eagles fans coming to our house. I mean, you actually think it'd be an Eagles home game. I heard E A G L E S Eagles 4,000 times. 
I it was the worst weekend of my entire life. You couldn't tell. I'm a little crazy. And every time I try and go to sleep, I picture Carson Wentz with a three-step drop back, and then he gets killed because one, our interior O line is made of sixth grade JV players. Carson Wentz easily has the worst pocket presence, maybe of all time. <laughs> this team is making me go insane. We got Dallas next week. And guess what, man? Last year, we played the Eagles, and then we went on the road to play Dallas, and we lost by 35 points. <laughs> it's probably going to happen again. The Cooper Rush? Dude. You'd I be, wouldn't put it past you, honestly. I wouldn't put it past <laughs> us. Bad weekend, but on the bright side, at least you can cheer yourself up. Didn't say I did this because I'm underage. If you're upset, <laughs> go buy a $16 beer that Dan Snyder put into place. Wow. That's my rant. I mean, how do I even follow that up? I... Been saving that in. Um Coaching staff's got to go. I, I, you, you know, I hate when people just say coaching staff's got to go, but it's been three years. And in year three, you cannot lose in that fashion to Philadelphia against a division rival. It is completely unacceptable. I'm not as mad as some people they are with Wentz because everything around Wentz was just not working. The defense was awful. O-line was awful. Play calling was awful. Like, Sam, I'm, I'm going to give you a scenario here. All right? Okay. So Carson Wentz, a guy who we both agreed gets very frittered. Is that fluttered? Fluttered is the right word. Flustered. Easily. Sure, flustered easily. You know, when when the pressure gets to him, he probably usually cannot amount to that pressure, right? Yes. And in his first game back against Philadelphia – what and of course, Eagles fans are booing the shit out of him, as obviously they are. You know how Eagles fans are. Yes. If I am Scott Turner, am I managing the run, playing short screen, quick off the hand, the release passes, or am I taking my jolly old time, abandoning the run, and allowing their front four? You know, there are seven plays. With their front four, just their front four, no one else, no linebackers, no safeties, no corners, just their front four. They got home seven times, just their four against our five, seven times. So I'll ask you, Sam, which scenario do you think makes more sense? <laughs> Running the ball, which was working on Antonio Gibson, quick passes to arguably the three most athletic trio in the NFL with Jahan, Curtis, and Terry. Or are you going to fuck it up? What would you what would you pick? Whatever we displayed in that first half. Probably not what we displayed. <laughs> I'm done. That's it. Uh you we can move on. Unless um, you have anything to say, but like No, no I, I don't. I just that Philadelphia is really good and that's I, I'm but, not even sorry to interrupt, but like Hertz is great. But it's not even hurts. Like Devontae and oh, AJ Brown yeah, yes. are incredible. They are incredible. Like everyone's giving Hurts a lot of credit. And yes, he's gotten really freaking good this year compared to last year. But the players around him, you're we talking about this coming in the season. I said Philadelphia outside of quarterback has like arguably the best roster in the NFL. They are showing that so far this year. Their wide receivers, their offensive line is the best in the league. Their D line is deep. Like you're talking about them rushing four all the time and it working. That's the benefit of being able to rotate those guys constantly and get practically the same level of production when you rotate those guys in because they're all playing fresh. Then you got like Darius Slay playing out of his mind. This team is really good. So you went up against a team that is way better than you. So I know you got absolutely embarrassed. But that's really all I have to give you that's kind of hopeful. Fair. Um, but that I don't care if it's the It's a division rival. It's a division no. rival. But this is you're supposed to make division rival games close. That's what the expectation is. Because if you get blown up by a division rival, it's like the worst feeling in sports aside in football, aside from like a playoff loss. 
you know. Yeah. And I just want to ask you this. When is the next time you talk about the commanders? Is there any other scenario where you're going to talk about them? If we start winning. But if things go really shit, I might pull out another rant. We'll see. But I had to let that out. I've been saving it this weekend. <laughs> it was, it's been tough. Damn. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I'm supposed to follow that up. Um, oh, you can. It's just... It, it, if anyone was a Commanders fan, they could say what I was saying. I, it's just... It's like... um, doing a comparison here. Um, it's like, yeah, it's like Game of Thrones Season 8. You, you wait seven seasons. Even though it was a little, like, slack the last couple seasons, like, still very good television. And he put out, like, dog shit. Anyone would have ran to Twitter and been like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, it's so... You know, Sam, let's hear it. Take number two. Um, I guess I'll talk about uh, this take is going to pale in comparison, but um, the bills are showing cracks and concerns. That's basically my take. Um, the past two weeks, the Buffalo Bills, I'm sure all of you know, have been the best team in the league. Coming into the year, they were the favorite to win the Super Bowl. They have looked the part. And then this past week, they got a lot of injuries on defense. And I was like, all right, I'm going to pick Miami to win this game. I just think they're going to score with that set with that secondary practically all being out. I mean, I think Micah Hyde's out for the year, right? Poyer was just hurt for this game. Yeah. Um, Which is a big deal. And then they just have like none of their corners. So I was like, all right, Miami's going to score on them. It's a home game. They're going to play in the, in the heat. It's a big advantage in Miami. I'm just going to go with the, with the Dolphins. Not going to overreact. Um, I'm still not going to overreact. I still think the Bills are the best team in the league um, when they're healthy. But their offense has some cause for concern after watching this game. Uh, I think I brought this up before, but I thought the only real concern for this offense coming into the year was their offensive line, which isn't the best. I mean, Deion Dawkins is... Good. It, it played, yeah, it played fine in the first two games, which we were saying it's all it needed to do. But when you go against Miami's defensive fronts, yeah, it's going to cause you some problems. And this offensive line is unable to run the ball. They cannot run block at all. The Bills are the least efficient running game in the NFL, I think, right now. It might be Cincinnati. It's one of those two. I'll um, check, man. They are maybe Cincinnati's better after this past game, but I don't think Mixon had a good game. But basically, the Bills can't run the ball. They they just can't. Their run game is practically zero right now. Where they make their money is their passing game. And that's because they have Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, Gabe Davis, Dawson Knox, McKenzie, all that. And I mean, yeah, I would do that too. But when you... Go against in a top tier pass rush with Phillips, Agba, Ingram, God, not Godshaw, a uh, fucking Wilkins, whatever that one new Shear is that his name? I don't know. He wears ninety two. He's pretty good. He, I've seen him a lot this so far this season. And then you got that back end secondary. Javon Holland had an excellent game. They're gonna have some struggles. And I was like, all right, I, I think they're going to actually kind of hit a hit a wall in this game and not score that much. Um, but, man, they were getting after Josh Allen. They were shutting down the run. Um, you never really know how good you have it with offensive line play until that player is gone. Like Trent Williams last night. Trent Williams had an ankle sprain last night. He was holding down the fort. Ankle sprain, they throw in their backup. Immediately, that becomes a liability, and Jimmy Garoppolo is getting pressured from the backside like every single play by Bradley Chubb, Randy Gregory. Um, So they lose like Deion Dawkins. I'm concerned because Josh Allen's going to be running for his life. And then Josh Allen threw the ball 71 times? Yeah. Is that right? I believe that's the most passing attempts by a quarterback in the modern era. What? How many? Did they have like a shit ton of passing yards too? He had like 450. 
And I'd hope he had that many if he yeah. threw it 71 times, especially with that that receiving core. Yeah. And it's just like this Bills offense, like if you can't run the ball, you can't pass the ball. Or not pass the ball. They could definitely pass the ball. <laughs> you can't pass you can't run block. And your pass protection is kind of a little uh, eh, but it's not the worst. You're gonna have to rely on Josh Allen just being a god. And it, honestly, I, I was listening to the Athletic Football Show earlier today, Elite Podcast. Sorry, I'm cheating on you. Um, and I we're think better. Was, I think it was Nate Tice that brought up that it feels like the Bills run the ball not for the sake of establishing the run or just running the ball. It's for the sake of giving Josh Allen a breather. <laughs> And honestly, he brought that up, and I'm like, I see it. So that's what that's kind of just what I wanted to bring up. I just want to say the Bills are not the greatest team ever. I know some people are like, wow, this team might be the best regular season team of all time. No, they have weaknesses. So now you're going to say that when the team hasn't won a Super Bowl, you know? Like, it'd be different if they had proven success in the past, but they haven't. So, Like, Tampa Bay healthy is probably the closest to the – perfect team in the nfl if you ask me um because their roster just from top down is just incredible um but then you get all this injuries that they're having and they look like shit we'll get to tampa bay later um but the bills obviously they have a great roster amazing defense but when you get injuries, you're going to have to hold it back. But but then you go to the offense side of the ball and you have these inabilities and these shortcomings. It's going to hurt you. But when you have such an overwhelming strength at quarterback and the passing game, it makes up for some things. So I want to see how this plays out over the rest of the season and see if other defenses can give them fits and figure out ways because this game was just wild. Uh, the whole Tua thing was crazy. The butt punt. <laughs> a lot of shit happened in this game. Um, guys were looking absolutely gassed in the Miami Heat. Uh, I guess pun intended, but it, it was it was just interesting. It, it's just a weird game. I picked the Dolphins, so I'm not shocked, and I'm not going to say the Bills aren't the best team in the league right now because I still think they are, even though they have in these injuries. But just keep these things in mind. Yeah, I'm not worried about the Bills whatsoever. Um, I, I think they'll be fine. They're still, in my opinion, the Super Bowl favorites. Um, I, I agree with you with the mis- not mistakes, uh, the issues that they do have on this roster. Um, and we've seen teams in the past rely too much on the quarterbacks with the hero ball, um, and it can fail teams. So yes. we'll, we'll see if that is an issue for this year. Um, but I, I still think they'll be fine. Their defense and it sucks because, and obviously it, that's part of the NFL from a health standpoint, the bills when healthy are easily, in my opinion, the best team in football, but they've dealt with a multitude of injuries so far. Um, who knows what's going to happen as the year goes on? Cause this is just only three weeks in. Um, so and obviously one of the biggest components just in NFL is health. So we'll see what they are. And, but when you have Josh Allen, a quarterback, it has to be super bowl or bust. Um, and Josh Allen made mistakes in this game. Um, even though that one fourth and goal, it, it just seemed like the ball slipped out of his hands. That's a terrible throw there. Um, the red zone offense wasn't super efficient in this game. Like Josh Allen wasn't perfect in this game, but I think that's almost good for Buffalo because um, you're going against a undefeated Miami team on the road. He didn't play well. I mean, that's definitely not even close to the best that Buffalo could play. Like they did not play well up to their standards. You saw how upset they were after the game. Like their expectations are Super Bowl, and they understand that. I think they'll be completely fine. Um, Josh Allen will figure it out as he always does. Yeah, and they were one holding call away from winning. That yeah. holding call on the last drive pulled them out of field goal range, basically. Yeah, screwed them. And there's so many like what ifs too, because like if the butt punt doesn't help or doesn't happen, um even though they get the ball back, but that's two points subtracted. You pin them back probably maybe further. Like there's still so many hypotheticals in it. So, um, yeah, I mean, then you got Miami just, they did their thing. I, I, I know I've gassed up the dolphins the past two weeks. 
I, I'm waiting for you and Sully to finally have a Miami takeaway. But I, when I was, that day happens, I'll probably be dead. Um, if there's ever a time on this podcast, I praise Tua. I'm either on some hardcore drugs or it's me disguised because that's not happening. Where are you ranking Tua in quarterbacks right now? Just the season alone? However you want to do it. I, I won't <laughs> like, judge you for however you want if to do it. I, if I was doing like, if I was a GM, I always like to do it this way. If I was a GM, I had the same roster for every team and it's one year I can try and win a Super Bowl. Like, how would I rank the QBs? Okay, you can do that. After what he's shown, because he has been, you cannot deny. 12 to 15 good. range? Okay. That's actually that's actually way better than I thought you put him. I don't I think even, it, I, the, like. I think it might just be that you have emphasized everything no, and exaggerate dude, I, everything. I was talking to Seva last night, and he was like, Everyone in ASU just shits on the Dolphins, which is very true. Hey, Everyone Seba, in... I don't do that. You know I don't do that, Seba. No, I'm you... like your only supporter. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it was directed to you. Um, but then I was like, I don't even hate the Dolphins. I don't. I just say I hate Tua because I've been just do- saying it for so long. If Tua, all right. if Tua wins MVP or a Super Bowl, by the time we record this podcast, it could be in many years from now, it could be this year. If it happens... I will buy a Tua jersey, and I will write a 500-word apology to Tua. If he ever wins MVP or a Super Bowl? A Super Bowl, yes. Within this podcast lifetime? Yes. Okay, so we've got like 50 years? Yeah. Okay. He's got to do it. Uh, that's your. Uh, that's my Tua, challenge. Tua, you're on the clock. Curtis, what's your third take? All right, so my third take, we're going to talk about Jimmy G and the 49ers. Talked a little bit about the Niners last week, but I talked specifically about Kyle Shanahan and how much I'm not a fan of him. But I didn't watch all of this game. Was too busy listening to Commander's podcast and saying the same rant that I had. You didn't miss anything. Uh, This game was botched. But I will say, um, when it was 11 to 10, and the Niners had the ball with 230, I think it was, um, around that, Jimmy G gets the ball. I think to myself, they're going to win this game. I I just see Jimmy G pulling off a game-winning drive. Um, It just seems like a Kyle Shanahan win. They have a perfect last drive, and then everyone slobbers over Kyle, and it's like, that's how you play football. He has a terrible throw for an interception. In triple coverage, it was. Um, Then they get the ball back. And even though he's from his goal line at this point, he still has another opportunity with about two minutes remaining because they used all three timeouts. It wasn't his fault on the fumble, but still, you get two opportunities. You can't even get a field goal out of that, and you only score 10 points in this game. I'm not worried about the Niners. I still think they're going to win the division, but not having Trent Williams for multiple weeks, you brought it up earlier, he's their best player by far. He's a top five player in this league. It's going to hurt them massively. And you said in the takeaways, like, don't overthink it. Trey Lance was their QB, and he is. And how many times, I, it just seems like this is going to be the identity of what we think on this podcast. But, geez, like, it is so much drama with Jimmy G and the whole quarterback situation because Jimmy G is, like, at the end of the day, I have said on this podcast, me, like, I, I've joked about how. He's really good. I obviously don't think he's really good. I still think he's a good regular season quarterback. He can win you games. That's the biggest trait. But I will say wins are in no way a QB stat. But he does win games. And I think that's a perfect situation. That's kind of what we've seen the past couple years with him and with the 49ers, with Shanahan. Because obviously Shanahan, before coming into this game, is evident he favored him over Trey Lance and really any QBs he's had in the past. Um but Jimmy G is just not that good. And I've seen it against the Rams. I've seen it against the Chiefs, and I've seen it against now. I don't know exactly what his game-winning drive percentage is because, you know, he does have one against you guys. Um, Fuck you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I'll, I'll try and fight, find this stat out if okay. I can. But, like, talking. I just named three off the top of my head, and I feel like we've seen in the past Jimmy G and his ability to close out games hasn't been that good. 
Again, was shown into full force last night. Two opportunities in the span of under three minutes. I don't know what you do. 49ers found themselves in a tricky spot because now you're out without your best left tackle. And you said when Trent was out, that was a miserable offensive line performance. He was carrying it down. He's the best left tackle in football. Um, And Jimmy G, man, like the 49ers are so good at home. But when they're on the road, and this hasn't just been happening in a two-game sample size. It has been happening for years now. They are not good on the road, um, especially when it's having to go like to Denver, Chicago. I, I, it's just 49ers in a mess right now. Like I said, I'm not going to panic. I don't even know really what this argument was. It was more so like Jimmy G, I just don't think is that good. Again, he failed with the game-winning drive. I still think he's going to be all right this year. And I still think they're going to win the division, but I think that's more so because the Cardinals have been terrible. The Rams, I'm still not buying into this Rams team. Seattle looks terrible. Like this, this division is not that good. Um, and we all thought it would be pretty good. I think the Niners will still win this division, but come playoff time, I know I had them in the Super Bowl. I know it's a three game sample size. I just, but I kind of thought that was Trey Lance, to be fair. I do not think this team is going to go far in the playoffs. Uh, well, they'll go further than round one if they face us. I'll assure you that. Um, <laughs> but I do. I couldn't find anything like his actual stats. That's I'd have right. to like dig forever. But I, I actually think he probably has a pretty good game drive winning percentage because I, I've no solely brought this up in 2020. With Jared Goff and how Sean McVay is basically like linking his brain to yeah. Jared Goff and he's like he's playing quarterback for him. Yeah. Yeah. He's like playing quarterback and Jared Goff is just like like he's like controlling him with his mind. That's kind of how Jimmy G is with with Kyle Shanahan. Um he wins by Shanahan. That's how they win. And Shanahan is, I think, one of the best coaches in the league. Top five. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I, I overreacted last year. I know I had a takeaway one time last year where I said they were he was overrated. I I, I Yeah, let's go. Uh, I, I still think he's one of the best coaches. I think he's probably the uh, best play caller in the league. I don't know. Uh, sorry, but it's the case. But the thing is, he, you live – by Shanahan, you die by Shanahan. That's kind of how I view it with Jimmy G. But also, you die by Jimmy G. You don't win by Jimmy G. You only can die by Jimmy G. Does that make sense? Yeah, because it does. he limits you, and you know you have a certain ceiling with him, and that is a playoff caliber team that can win playoff games, but not really make it over the hump. Um, we saw that. In the Super Bowl, where you couldn't get one more drive out to beat the Chiefs, had that game-winning touchdown throw basically right open to him, to Emmanuel Sanders, I think. It missed was. it. And then, it obviously, open. last year, he had the uh, 20, drive. 20, 2020, he, di- he, he died. <laughs> In 2020, he was hurt. 2021, uh He was horrible in the Green Bay game, even though he had the game-winning drive, but special teams and defense won the Niners that game. That was not the offense. Um, And then they faced the Rams, and he flops at the end of the Rams game. Like, we, we know what he is and what his limitations are. In this game, he missed Debo like three times. Two of them would have been like 70 yard touchdowns. Devo was wide open down the seam a couple times where he could have hit him. And I think one of them, he threw a really bad incompletion on. It's just like, you, you know who he is. You don't win by him. You die by him. And I'm still like in disarray. Like I was looking at like replies this past week when Trey Lance got hurt and how people were like, we love Jimmy G. We think he's our quarterback. Trey Lance is like a wish wash, good or bad guy. Jimmy G gives us 
stability and we know what we are. We know we're a Super Bowl caliber team. And I'm like, yeah, but have, has he shown you anything? Like, what are the reasons you have lost in the playoffs the past few years where you think you have it to win it all? What has been right. the reason? What has been the reason? What has been the underlying like common threat between those losses. It's the quarterback. Yeah. And, and I heard a good point this morning. Um, It was on the radio. I was listening to like, it is like the thing with quarterbacks in the NFL is obviously outside of the first 10, 12, whatever the number is, there is just such a massive drop off between those guys that can win you Super Bowls and everyone else. And like Jimmy G is in that middle of the pack right now. And if I like, I know what Jimmy G, I have to have a perfect roster around me to win a Super Bowl. And that's what I was saying with Trey Lance. At least Trey Lance gives you the potential. The ceiling is much higher to potentially be something. And that is why it blows my mind that people are just like so content with Jimmy Garoppolo. And, and that's why like, we talk about this podcast so much, like even with Carson Wentz for me, there's realistically on paper, there's probably no reason why I should be cheering for this team because Carson Wentz is not in any sort of world, unless with a perfect roster is going to win you a Super Bowl. His best chance obviously came in 2017 and that Eagles team was pretty much perfect. And it wasn't even him who finished the job. Who knows if it could have been him to do it. Like, it is. It blows my mind that teams, if they're, if it's a quarterback like Tua, like I don't think Tua is a Super Bowl winning quarterback, but they have almost a perfect roster built around Tua, to where it almost seems like they're able to do so. And I don't know why teams just don't build around that way. And I think like Jimmy, and I think the Niners are close to perfect, but like it's the same roster we've seen in a couple of years and Jimmy's we, we've seen him fail. So, you know? Yeah. And it's been reported that they're going to go to Trey Lance next year already. And it's like, yeah, no shit. I just, mean, last, just move on, please move on. I bet they sh- I brought it up last week. They should have just traded him so they could have avoided all this drama with fans picking sides of who they want to root for. I'm honestly rooting for this year to be bad for Jimmy G just so people can wake up. Even though I want players to succeed, I just want this like drama around this quarterback position for this team to end because it's ridiculous. And it's just like- also, I heard not, I heard the most bullshit response from Jimmy G after the game. He said, they're like, what happened? Like you didn't play well. What went through your mind? All that. And he was like, well, like, I'm not trying to make excuses, which incoming excuse is about to come. I'm not trying to make excuses, but um, it's just tough um, when you're named the backup for that oh, for the first boy. couple of weeks and then be thrown uh, into the starter. I was like, dude, you were the starter for how many years before this? And you had a full week of preparation. Like He I- also was the backup for Tom Brady yeah, and I- one went two and one when he was the backup and a suspension came out of nowhere for him. I was uh, so mad at that quote. I was like, dude, are you kidding me? Bro, he Dan orlovsky He did. He did. <laughs> With the greatest tweet of all time from Dan, by that the way. Was, that, that was funny. The best tweet I've ever seen in my life. Um, Like, that play is going to live on in infamy. And I, I just hope that this whole season, like, I still think the Niners will make playoffs the NFC is wide open. I'll touch on that in my next take. Um, but I just want this quarterback drama to end so bad. And if they make the playoffs and they lose, it's over. Probably it going to be over. It's probably going to be because of him, unless they're injured, because it's looking like they're going to get injured. A couple guys are getting injured right now. Trent Williams, obviously, if they lose him, geez. Um, can but you like, fu- can you imagine if that was obviously uh, hypothetically it can't work because they're in separate conferences? If that's like the NFC Championship game and that's the game that was being played by Jimmy G, oh my god, 
it would be unbelievable. I, I, I would hope fans would absolutely run him out of town. Kyle Shanahan would still find a way to support him. <laughs> <laughs> Just Look, like Kyle. When you have a defense that's playing at this level, you got to put up more than 11, more than 10 points against one of the worst managed like teams in the NFL so far. I will say the Broncos still are not good. They they're not. I, Their I, offense I, I, is I know we, in shambles. <laughs> Wilson just looks rough. I don't know what happened. Their usage of personnel is so horrible. They how they're used splitting between Javante, Melvin Gordon. It's horrible. Mike it is Boone horrible. is terrible. Mike Boone almost had the same amount of snaps as like Javante last night. Just give night. it to Javante. I, all the efficiency numbers back up Javante. Melvin Gordon had two fumbles last night and he still played the goal line carries. Right. I, I, the Broncos are a whole other, no, another subject and I don't want to talk about them yeah. until they give us some semblance. How are they two and one, man? How? Because they played uh, the Texans and a Jimmy G Niners. That is why. Even though we know the Jimmy G Niners are good, but like the Jimmy G Niners have that defense. But like that you get, defense is elite. But you also get that from Jimmy. Like he's going to win a lot yes. of home games. He's going to be very good throughout the year, and he's going to have stinkers like that. So. And the last thing I'll say about this segment: um, yesterday morning, I DM Kurt and I go, "It's kind of funny." I send Kurt a DM on Twitter, and it's just the report that the Commanders had an agreement with the Niners for Jimmy Garoppolo in the off season before the deal fell apart. Thank God it fell Garoppolo. apart. <laughs> Underwent soldier surgery, and then you said, "Yeah, I did. Whatever. Wentz is playing well for us." And then <laughs> Moe was before Wentz, disaster. Carson Wentz had that performance. Um, I, so maybe this is a very much hot take. I know I just said um, you're not going to win Super Bowl with Wentz, so automatically it doesn't really matter. But at least with Wentz, I'm going to get like those four touchdown games with Jimmy G. You're up highs and lows, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. What, but then again, you're also going to They both suck. Who cares? What's your next take? Um, Similar to the Niners, I've got a take about the Packers and the Buccaneers from this week where basically I'm just saying, get your shit together on offense. That's is this basically to both what teams? It, yes, both to both teams. teams. This okay. is what it's boiling down to. Um, now, I know Tampa Bay, the receivers were out. Um, their offensive line has kind of had guys moving in and out. The Packers had some receivers hurt. David Bakhtiari's coming back for the first time. They're playing on the road. Whatever. Both of these offenses have not been good to start the year, especially Tampa. Tampa has been a nightmare on offense. Tom Brady I know we have that take on the takeaway. I did not write that one, by the way. That was Seba. I wanted to change it to the Buccaneers, wanted to get healthy. But Brady looks like he has no chemistry with anyone out there right okay, now. Yeah, that Brady take was rough. Yeah, I didn't like it either. I didn't but like it either. He got comments, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. But the offensive line hasn't been as good. Obviously, when you're out, Jensen and Donovan Smith, it's going to hurt. Um, and then you've got... You know, like the run game hasn't been awesome, but like they were doing okay against Green Bay in the run game, but they persisted with passing. And the Packers defense was just shutting them down. And then you go over to the Packers, which is a whole other story about their offense, which I can get into. This is the Packers offense. Their game scripts are literally the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. Their game scripts against every defense they face that's like a top-tier team, they destroy them. Happened in the Niners playoff game last year, Tampa Bay game, Rams game last year. They just destroy them on the early drives. And then once they get punched in the mouth, they just fall flat on their, their backs. They don't do shit, and the offense absolutely shuts down. That is what happened this week. They went absolutely bananas on those first two drives and the third drive. They were moving the ball. Aaron Rodgers was hitting guys. He was like, I think he was like 14 of 14 passing. And then Aaron Jones fumbles at the goal line. 
After that, they had eight. They went 0 for 8 on third down until the final drive where they got into field goal or close to field goal range. They had a first and 10 from like the 42. And then they get they couldn't get five yards when you have AJ Dillon who can chip away at least. And then they get sacked out of field goal range, which is the first sack of the day um, for Aaron Rodgers. So then they didn't get any points on the board. Tampa Bay was down 14 to six Packers defense has been playing lights out the whole game. They're kind of gassed a little bit. Tampa goes down, scores a touchdown. Then Tampa Bay has the delay of game. Almost happened on the point conversion. Almost happened on the The touchdown touchdown, as well, where uh, Russell Gage had a false start on that touchdown also because he thought they, they were going to get a delay a game. Um, they didn't call that. And then they get to delay a game. I don't know how. It looks like Brady's trying to switch the play. They get to delay a game. And on the delay of game play, Leonard Fournette just waltzes into the end zone on that play, by the way. Yeah. So it works. And then they go back seven yards. Packers are all over the play. And then they lose the game because Tampa Bay's offense is absolutely in shambles. And it just looks like they just are a mess. They need to get healthy. And I don't know if health is going to fix it because they just look so discombobulated all over the place. I still think this team has the best roster in the NFL when healthy and they have a top five quarterback. But there's just so many weird factors playing into this team right now. With the coaching change, Tom Brady leaving training camp, him not co- not uh, practicing once a week, the receivers all getting hurt, uh, the offensive line shifting all over. They're lucky they have a top one defense, top two, top three defense in the NFL because it keeps them in games and wins them games against the Saints and then nearly wins them games against the Packers. So... I'm concerned about both these teams' offenses, and this basically just tells me the NFC is just wide open. The Eagles are far and away the best team in the NFC, but I'm still not like convinced they're going to go to the Super Bowl because yeah. I need to see Jalen Hurts in the postseason at least a little bit um, because first time we saw him in the postseason, horrific. Yeah, uh, But obviously he's made strides. But the NFC is just wide open for grabs right now, and... Both these teams need to get better because what they are doing on offense right now is not working. And the Packers need to get their shit together because they have no counter punch whenever they get like punched. Basically last year in the Niners playoff game, they were humming Marseille Lewis fumble. They didn't score the rest of the game. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Similar thing. Yeah. No, I was just about to bring up that comparison. Like um, fantastic first drives in that playoff game in here. And then a costly turnover. And then after that, it's like you can't get anything clicking. Um, I, I loved what LaFleur was doing with Jones and Dylan, like using them in situations where like it'd be like a like a, almost like a triangle with them and Rogers, um, and utilizing them in obviously different ways because you don't see that a lot with teams. Um, but yeah. Um what was I gonna say? Oh, it's you know, the downfall of Tom Brady. Isn't going to come from Tom himself, but his wife. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's tough. Um, I think both teams will be fine. I picked Green Bay in game picks, by the way. So I did. Uh, uh, I, I only picked him because Roger said on McAfee, it was like the same exact scenario as last year where he got blown out week one. You won week two, and then week three, you played a tough NFC opponent. And didn't you win in week three last year? Who did we play in week three? It was the so, Saints, I think. No, didn't you open the season with the Saints and you got blown out? Oh yeah, that no week three against the Saints was your prior. Uh, uh, I think uh, it was the Niners. It was the Niners game uh, when Aaron Rodgers had that thirty-second field goal drive. See, see, that Rodgers, game was great. Rodgers knows something. Um, but yeah, um, I'll go quick on my next take. Um, I want to talk about the Raiders. <sighs> I said the Raiders were going to be the uh, second best team in the division. 
I said potentially the um I said potentially the first. I didn't say the first. So they could compete. Thank for- God. Yeah, right. Um Derek Carr looks bad. McDaniels has obviously made a lot of mistakes. We knew he wasn't a great coach. I thought he could do just well enough to lead him well. Um when you have Devontae Adams, you probably should give him more than five targets. Don't we agree? Um you would think. Yeah. Um it just the offense looks bland. The defense, we knew that'd be concerned coming into the year. It's just a bad team. And in a get right game against Tennessee on the road, I said it in my betting predictions. I thought it just screamed a game that they would get right. Um, they kind of figure it out. They didn't figure it out. And they went to the wire. Tennessee gave them the game. Like Tennessee had every right to just cruise on in that game. Um, and now Vegas is a tough game. Who do they play next week? It might be the Chargers. The, I was gonna say the Chargers. No, it's the Broncos. It's the Broncos. It's okay, the Broncos. Broncos. But they are home in that one. They have to win. Um, but like 0 and 3, we've seen in the past 0 and 3 teams. You don't want to say a season's over, but things are looking like the season is over. Uh, it just hasn't worked out in Vegas so far, and it hasn't even been that tough of a schedule. You had Arizona, you had now you had Tennessee. You got to win at least one of those. Both of those are winnable, and then the Chargers. Like that's, that's a division game. Healthy. You have yeah. you have you like you got to at least split with them throughout the year. So. I was wrong on the Raiders. You know, it's the only time in my life I've been wrong, so it's unfortunate. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But that was a bad team, and I'll own up to it. Uh, their schedule for the next few games. It's probably t- terrible. Uh, the Broncos? It's not bad. I don't, I don't know who wins that game. <laughs> the battle of the shitters. <laughs> Literally. Um, the Chiefs, the Texans, the Saints, Jaguars, the Colts, the Broncos, the Seahawks. That's not bad. That's really not bad. Do they get to the positive win percentage, though? No. I don't but, see that. Well, I would say yes, like, before the year. But now they're 0-3. I'm like, fuck, no, they're not. Yeah. And, like, they end the year with the Rams, Patriots, Steelers, Niners, and Chiefs. I... I don't know, man. I, I'm just not. I in coming into the season, I had them eight and nine. I think um, I was 10, lowest. Seven. I was the lowest on them out of the three of us. I didn't think Derek Carr would be this bad. Uh, he has not yeah. been good. Uh, he nah. is missing guys all over the place, especially Adams. When they were talking up the entire off season, but him and Adams were amazing connection. in the week, in week one. So like. Well, what they happened? targeted him every yeah, play. Thought, yeah, no, it's oh my god. What could happened? you could you imagine paying Devontae Adams thirty million dollars, trading a first and a second, and then just not targeting him and targeting Mac Collins? Mac Collins. Oh, Mac Collins had a game. Good for him. He did. He did. <laughs> uh, I mean... Too bad the Raiders can't win games right now. And Mark Davis already has had a meeting with Josh McDaniels. Apparently, really, it's like, yo, yeah. bro, this sucks. It was Let's right it after out. the game. Man, a meeting. And look, I I know he shouldn't be a head coach, but John Gruden at the with this team would be fun to watch. Yes, I agree. If if he was not a weird not, <laughs> not a fucking horrible person, yeah. But if he was still play calling, I think this team would be fun. Yeah. I mean, last year with Passaccia, this team was really fun. Um I don't know why they ever let him go because those guys played for him. Right. And their offense was good with the Dan that. Campbell uh, mentality. So, yeah, I don't know. They're the only 0 and 3 team in the league, and every team they have lost to has only beaten the Raiders. So, Jeez. yikes. Okay. Final take. This has been a girthy episode. It has a lot see, of good content. See how sophisticated our conversations are without Matthew Sullivan. <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny. Um, my last take is I need Justin Fields to show us anything at this point. Um, basically, I know Sully brought this up preseason. He thinks that if you're not showing anything like in your first few games or season, you probably are never going to be elite. 
And Josh Allen is like the only outlier in like recent years. Hurts kind of. Hurts kind of. Hurts was kind of bad when he started in late 2020. He was kind of bad. But that whole situation was just wild. But like, I can't think of a quarterback in recent years that after their first season in their second year, that was horrible in their second year that didn't turn out to be a great quarterback other than Josh Allen. I mean, Tua kind of is doing that right now. Like Tua has made strides. So you could definitely say that for fields could happen once this, this supporting cast around him gets better, but he just has not been good. Like just straight up his decision-making has been rough. His pocket awareness has been rough. His accuracy has been uh, like he can make throws and I loved him coming out of the draft. Um, But you know, that quote about him saying, Oh, the NFL is kind of slow for me. Well, that's kind of been capped so far. And we're seeing guys like Trevor Lawrence, who last year was as bad as fields might've been worse. And he has completely turned it around this year. He's been one of the best quarterbacks in the league so far. Zach Wilson's been hurt. Trey Lance has been hurt. We haven't really, we can't even give any discernation of it. Like we just say that Trey Lance is the Niners quarterback, but like we have no idea how he will be. Um, Jimmy G will somehow find his way as the I, Niners QB. I don't know. Somehow. I don't know. But Mac Jones, he's basically showed what we all thought he would be. Um, Davis Mills has shown what we all thought he would be. Justin Fields has shown like brief flashes. And this showed up last week where he had 70 passing yards against Packers, like eight completed passes this week. They narrowly beat the Texans, but that was because of the Bears defense and running attack with Khalil Herbert. Shout out Dylan. Um, He just hasn't been great as a passer. And I, he needs to show some steps and some growth because I can't think of another quarterback recently that in their second year, they just look bad and then just lit it up or got better. I mean, two is like the only other guy I could think of right now. That's like kind of doing that right now. Other than Josh Allen. I don't know if you can think of anyone. Probably not. Hertz was the only one I could thought of, but. Yeah, um, Hertz maybe, but Hertz showed progression in his second year. Right. Fields has taken a step down in his second year. And I know the supporting cast is horrible and it's the worst supporting cast in the league, but it's just like you're it, throwing him to the wolves. And I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I'm at least glad he openly admits he plays bad. He's not like Jimmy G, where Jimmy G's like, Oh, I just, I'm the backup. Shut up, Jimmy. You literally started for multiple yeah. years. I will say the thing with, um, with Justin that I'm not really like giving him the benefit of the doubt, but, um, they really, I mean, Matt, Matt Eberflus has no confidence in him, which yeah. kind of sucks. Like if you have no confidence in your QB, that definitely takes a toll because obviously against Green Bay, he only threw the ball. What was it? Eight times, nine times. Um, and then this game, he barely gets any action too. Like you'll rarely see this guy throwing for over hundred yards, but I think a lot of that is just because of the way he's been playing. Like if Khalil Herbert's playing fantastic the way he has, they have a great running game with him in Montgomery. Um, like they utilize those skill positions as well as more of just like, as not necessarily like receivers and tight ends. They use them a lot in the running game as well from a blocking standpoint. Um, so everyone really gets involved except for just fields. Like he's just kind of out there. Um, the thing is though, you can't, you can't criticize. They are two and one say what you want about those wins and the game against green Bay. Like outside of that first drive against you guys, there was nothing special that Chicago did. Um, they're just not great. Um, but I will say it does suck that Justin Fields basically has no confidence. And we saw that with Trey Lance and how that can affect uh, one's quarterback. So I I would like to see it, a situation to where he does get full support, 
but also I don't think he deserves it so far because the opportunities he's had, he hasn't made the most of them. And we can't forget that he is not a draft pick of this, of this new regime. Yeah. So I think people's perception of his leash being long is wrong. I think it's much tighter than we would think. I agree. Um, I still think he'll get more than this year. Like if he's horrible this year, I still think he'll get next year. Um, Hey, now unless they got a top three pick and you got CJ Stroud or Bryce Young sitting there. I don't know. I think they would take. I, I think they would take a lineman or a, I pro, nah, or a receiver. I, don't. I really think. I mean, Stroud have, and Stroud and Young are better prospects than. Fields if you players. have, if you have a top three pick, I don't even care really who the QB is. I I feel like you just have to go Stroud or Young because you're not. If you're that bad, it's got to be for a reason. Maybe like Trevor. If like the Jaguars just somehow fucked it up and he was out for the year or something. Um, but every other situation, like I'm trying to think of of teams and off the top of my head and what they would do if they had a top three pick. Let's go to the NFL. Hold on. I'm gonna I mean this. the Cardinals said fuck you to Josh Rosen. I don't think they, the Cardinals will have a bottom three pick. Well, I, I'm using that as an example. Oh yeah, yeah. No, exactly. Okay. Jets, do we think they could have a bottom three pick? Maybe. I think they'd go QB. If the Pats had a bottom three pick, I think they'd go QB. The Patch? The Patriots? Yeah. I don't. I do. Um, Raiders? That's What do we think about the Raiders? I think they would. I think they would. Um, They just paid Carr, though. That's what makes it weird. Um. Texans, they would, hundred yes. percent. Atlanta would. Commanders would. Yes. Uh, Seahawks, could have taken Herbert. I know, I know. Uh, Seahawks could. Um, Lions, Lions would. would. Falcons would. Saint- yeah, a lot of teams would. So, um, you think yeah. the Jets would? Oh yeah, I think the Jets would. It's like, but Zach Wilson's just been hurt, like. I mean, it depends on how he plays when he comes back. Yeah, but I but think like I'm hoping they agree. I think Stroud and Young are much better prospects than Zach Wilson. I agree. But I also wasn't like super high on Wilson coming out. Um, all right, you want to get into I some bets as well? Uh, yeah, let's go. I'll start us off. I have an absolute lock this monster for you guys. I'll go with Tampa Bay plus 115 money line against the Chiefs. Um, I know the Chiefs are just coming off a loss. I think that's why they're favored in this game. It's at Tampa Bay, but so is Tampa Bay. They're coming off a loss. Um, revenge game for Tom Brady is inbound. Uh, the Chiefs game, the Chiefs team struggled last year early on in the year. They bounced back really in the second half of the last year. I made the reference last week in the podcast. I could see that happening again. I think Tampa Bay clears up a lot of what you were saying, Sam. I think the offense more so gets clicking. Their defense is obviously great, and I think Tom Brady's going to have a great game. The value's just too good there. I'm for Tampa Bay underdog team plus 115. I know it's the Chiefs. Um, we've seen the Chiefs Tampa scenario happen before with obviously Kansas City winning that game. Um, but obviously in the Super Bowl, Tampa Bay took the head of them, and I think at home Tampa Bay is going to bounce back. So I love plus 115 here uh, for Tampa over Kansas City. All right. I'm going to go with Bills Ravens and I'm going to take the over. I'm going to take over 51 and a half. Okay. Um, I think it's just going to be a passing fest. Okay. I nearly had a takeaway with Lamar because Lamar has been the best quarterback in the league this year. Uh, I wish we actually talked about that, but Lamar should be the MVP. He's the MVP front. Currently. Runner. Yes, he should be. Um, he has been incredible. Like we're talking about that leap that Hertz had. Lamar has had pretty much as good of a leap. He has been so much better as a passer this year. And it's just, I think this game with both these secondaries being kind of eh and depleted and both these run games, not really getting going. I think it's just to be a passing fucking frenzy. 
I think it's going to be a running up the score kind of game. And uh, this is going to be game of the week. I have no idea how there's a 12 p.m. game, um, but I will go with over 51. I think my biggest pet peeve is how they don't flex games early on in the year. I know that we see a lot of that in the back end of the year, but there's no reason why this game should not at the very least be a 425 game. Yeah, it's because of time zones and stuff like that. I don't give a fuck. All right. Both these teams are Eastern time zone teams. It's not a West. There's no Western time zone team on here. It's really weird stuff. They're trying to Seth, maximize TV viewers. And... Why don't you look me in the face and act mm-hmm. and ask me if I give a fuck? Go ahead, ask it. Do you give a fuck? No, not in the slightest okay. bit. All right, next bet. I love this one as well. I'm going to go with the under 44 and a half in the Chargers Texans game. Um, That's a good bet. It screams what we saw in week one with the Ravens Jets. Uh, Texans are not going to put up any points in this game. The Chargers defense, yeah, it's been dealing with injuries, as you mentioned, but against a Texans offense that is not good. I'm expecting them to do very well. Um, the Chargers don't even have to put up a lot of points. I think they're only going to put up like low 20s to the Texans, like nine. And I think a 44 and a half, that's a pretty high number in all honesty. Um and you're giving me a Texans offense that isn't that good. Chargers have concern. And for minus five, like I, I would maybe go with that spread. Um, but if I was to go with another spread in this week, I'd go Packers minus 10 and a half. But I think that I'm just going to stick with um, the under and the Chargers Texans. It's my second bet. No parlay or anything. Got to get Yeah, back. I'm not doing a parlay this week. I think my parlay is going to hit tonight. We'll see. Um Ah, uh, I might go Packers minus ten and a half. The Panthers are favored against the Cardinals. Wow. Oh my god, the Bears play the Giants next week. Jeez. Giants have had an easy start to the year. They have. Um I will go. Lions money line minus two fifty. Gonna play it safe. Okay. Against Seattle. Okay. Um, I think I well, I went with the uh I want the Packers, by the way, with for my survivor. Um that's the, great pick. <laughs> I am in the top 150 of the ASC survivor out of a thousand fifty. So let's continually support me. Yeah, let's uh let's have a great uh end. Um, but that's going to be it. Highlighted podcast. Um, Takeaway Tuesday, week three. Uh, we'll be back next week for week four. Thank you guys for listening. Until next time, we will see you guys later. Goodbye.